Welcome to the Biohacking Beauty Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Brittany Ford, better known as Biohacking Brittany. <laughs> and uh, first, first of all, welcome, Brittany. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for, for being our guest. So, Brittany, um, just a little bit of a background. Uh, we're, we're a skincare company. We deal with uh, biohacking skincare. Mm -hmm. And we are heavily developed in research and development. But really, the more we delve into research and development, the more we, we understand that uh, the journey for better skin or for uh, defying skin aging is a multifaceted journey. It's not only about what skincare you use. It's, it's, it's really a plethora of things that you can use. And this is really what this podcast is about what are some of the strategies that we can employ in order to defy aging, skin aging, optimize our health, et cetera. And you, you are, you're basically an expert in the subject. And I'm really interested how you go to it, how you go into biohacking. Yeah. Yeah. So I had my own health struggles, um, about like 10, 11 years ago and really just struggled finding answers. I went to my doctor and she basically said nothing was wrong. Um, and I was having very weird signs and symptoms and trying to understand what was going on even at like such a young age. Um, How and old were you at the time? I was 16. Okay. You know, wow. uh, as a teenager and, and yeah, I was just struggling. And so I started going to see um, a naturopath and a nutritionist and kind of went down the road of healing naturally and yeah. fell in love with it, fell in love with everything that it promoted. And it was about, um, then I went and like worked with different people and studied in different ways. Um, and found biohacking a couple of years ago, I think, in, yeah, maybe three years ago, almost, um, when I was really looking for something that was more than just nutrition because mm -hmm. I am a registered holistic nutritionist by trade, but I find that just focusing on nutrition isn't really enough in order to be healthy. So mm -hmm. when I stumbled upon biohacking as this holistic way of looking at the body and way of healing, I really um, just like grabbed onto it and went with that. And so, yeah, I've kind of like fallen in love with it and that's where I am now. And when I help my own clients, it's, you know, we focus a lot on nutrition, but we also focus a lot on biohacking. Um, so it's kind of like they meet in the middle, which is really cool. Okay. That, that's, that's awesome. It's, it's interesting to me that um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as saying uh, health issues are, uh, are a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. But it is very interesting to me that the majority of people I meet in that field are really people who have had some kind of struggles where conventional medicine work wasn't really the answer and uh, that led them to this journey. Yeah. And what, you know, biohacking, because it is a newer field, it, different people have different definitions of it. Mm -hmm. I really like uh, Dave Asprey's definition, kind of his, mm -hmm. his slogan, which is kind of, um, affecting the environment around us and within us in order to better our biology. But what, how would you define biohacking? So, so what is your elevator pitch for biohacking? Yeah, so my definition is usually um, holistic self-care for optimal health. Mm -hmm. And the, like, if you break that down, what that means is that holistic self-care is exactly everything I was just talking about. So we're looking at nutrition and fitness and supplements and your environment and your relationships and stress and sleep and, and all of these different inputs into your body more than just what the average person might think. Um, so it's very holistic in nature and then for optimal health. So the goal isn't perfect health because no one has perfect health. Um, the goal is just to kind of level up from where you are right now. Like, how can we get you to be functioning in a more healthy way? Um, and pe different people have different health goals, but it's about optimizing your health. And so when you kind of take that holistic approach with a optimal health goal, it's very easy for people to kind of understand biohacking in a very 
in a more simple way because biohacking, I think, especially in the beginning, but it's better now in the beginning, biohacking seemed very like tech focused and, um, you know, more like body hacking and people putting like chips in their bodies and like doing these different things. Whereas biohacking generally isn't really like that anymore. So, um, that's like just one specific subdivision. So yeah, that's kind of like what I tend to describe it to people as. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an awesome explanation. I I really like your approach where most of, most of the people, again, that, that we meet that, that are interested in biohacking, it's almost that they want a quick fix for something that they're, that that's going on with them. And Mm -hmm. The beauty that the real magic of biohacking is it is more a set of, of or a more of a holistic understanding of how we should behave, what are the what are positive habits someone should have in order to to have you know better health in general. And mm-hmm. that normally improves that specific issue that the person is interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, in your life, what are your what what do you implement biohacking in your life? In what way? Uh, What are some of the uh, practices that you engage in? Yeah, so I've done a lot. Um, I do a lot. I've experimented. Some things work, some things don't work. Um, And and that's part of the reason I like biohacking in the first place is it's very personal. Um, What works for me might not work for you and vice versa. So it depends what my goals are. So you know, for example, um, like right now I have a red light therapy device right behind my desk, which Mm -hmm. I like to use on my skin, which is really great. Um, and red light therapy has become more popular recently. Um, I've been, you know, intermittent fasting in different ways over the years. And so playing around with that again, when I, yeah, I used to intermittent fast for about three years. Um, and it actually was too much and too hard on my body. So I had to take a break and Mm -hmm. then now I'm bringing it back, but in a more gentle approach. So that's kind of what I'm playing with right now is like different types of fasts. Um, other things that I do, oh my gosh, like I have my aura ring, which like checks my activity and it checks my sleep. Um, I, I, I don't even know, like I have so many different things that I like, I don't even know what's biohacking and what isn't anymore because right. it's, it's kind of like my full life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do like a variety of supplements. I am very active and try and get out into nature a lot and try and ground myself a lot. Um, at nighttime, I use blue blocking glasses to like block blue light. Um, and I have light bulbs in my apartment that they all go red as well, just to like get rid of the blue light. Um, yeah, and like that's just like off the top of my head what I can think of, but there's definitely other ones as well. Just an apropos, so the way I started, um, that way I stumbled upon biohacking, but also in general, the way that my um, journey in business started, I was an executive in a, uh, in a light therapy company, uh, oh. but I'm talking about 10 years ago when light therapy was considered, I remember talking to doctors about it and they thought I was out of my mind. They thought I'm selling snake oil in a lab. And uh, the the results we saw were were incredible. We were using low level lasers at the time, which part of the reason this this field is is changed so uh, radically is the implementation of LEDs. The fact that LEDs can give you the same, the same, Mm-hmm. you know it's a stimulation to your mitochondria and you can you can treat a larger area so that's that's cool that you're using it how often do you, do you use light therapy yeah so i this might be like too much information to share but um <laughs> i was i used to use it on my face quite a lot um mm-hmm. especially in 2019 i had um and i know we're going to get into skincare but i had my first ever um experience with acne like I never had mm-hmm. acne as a teenager like acne is not really in my family um so I had like adult onset acne for the first time and so I was really really using red light therapy uh, during that time just to try and help heal it um 
And now I actually, I don't use it on my face anymore. I probably should, but I don't. Um, I use it. I came across a post on Instagram and a woman was talking about how it can support um, fertility and mm-hmm. regulating your menstrual cycle. And so something that I struggle with is regulating my menstrual cycle and my hormones. And so she was actually having her red light device like on her ovaries, like on her stomach. And so now that's like what I've started doing is like, I've started using it um, for about 20 minutes daily, like on like where my ovaries are. Because again, like you said, if it's going to increase mitochondrial function, there's mitochondria in almost every single cell. So that same philosophy applies for supporting a menstrual cycle and supporting fertility. So that's kind of where I'm at with red light therapy is I'm experimenting actually with it um, on my on my fertility rather than on my on my face. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two anecdotes. Number one, um, I I don't know if you're aware of it, but um, red light therapy and also so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna caveat it, but red light therapy was is is um, heavily marketed, especially in Asia, for uh, uh, vaginal rejuvenation. Really? Yes, and they have apparatuses yeah. where, where they actually go intravaginal and and uh, supposedly uh, yeah because they they so that is where i'm going to caveat it number one a lot of the times in this less regulated field of medicine Mm -hmm. you will uh encounter heuristics or you you will see how uh one study looks at specific wavelengths and then it is being borrowed to tout some benefits from a completely different wavelength. So for example, mm-hmm. a uh, in the YAG laser, which you would, which a lot of people would know from facials, it, it kind of damages the skin a little bit and then you get a better result, is still infrared. And it's actually extremely close to the infrared that is used in light therapy. Mm. So, um, and the, the heat that we feel from the light therapy a little bit is, is really what is ablating, is really what's damaging a little bit um, either the skin or, or wherever it would be. And that is really what is being used professionally for vaginal rejuvenation. So that is, that. J- just to be clear, but um, something very cool. So have you ever heard about light therapy being used by NASA? It's kind of, um, mm-hmm. for you, you, who brought it into prominence is a company called Seluma which they sell light therapy panels that you can now buy for $300. They sell them for thousands of dollars to estheticians because they came before ever anyone knew about it. So um, they started with, with, with kind of claiming that NASA uses it. And what NASA really researched light therapy for is mouth ulcers that people get when they get go through chemo and radiation. And also... Um, also in our reproductive areas and also in the inside of our mouth, the, uh, th- that is very sim- a s- very similar membrane. Hmm. What I wanna say is, is if it works well for this, it should w- work well for uh, vaginal areas as well. So, yes. but this is something kinda, kinda cool to know, which, which you would be treating if you're treating, if, you're, if you have a large exposure, exposure area and you're using a normal light therapy device, no yeah. invasion needed. Yeah, so exactly, exactly. And the reason that you're doing it, you know, in one area and not another is not to exhaust your body. Do you feel lethargic if you use light therapy too much? Um, I don't know if I feel lethargic, but I think when I was using it daily, I feel like the benefits kind of plateaued. Yeah. And then, and then I just like stopped using it for like three months. Yeah. So I don't know if that's like proven, but that's like what I experienced. No, no, no. That makes a lot of sense because what happens is that you, it is, it is a hormetic device. It does. Mm. So hormesis in general, um, which is another company I started, by the way, uh, is called hormesis, but uh, hormesis in general means um, a low level of stressor, which your body kind of overreacts to and creates a better response. So even exercises hormetic for that 
that matter. And light therapy is hermetic as well. So exactly the, the same way you can overexercise, you can also over stress your mitochondria. Mm. And you know where you see it a lot? If you heard about metformin and its anti-aging effects, mm -hmm. so metformin works on a different complex in the mitochondria, but that's what it does. It taxes the mitochondria and then creates a, a positive response. And a lot of the times, or a lot of the research are pointing out that if you would be taking metformin and work out, you would be, you would actually be hitting a plateau or, or you would get, um, you know, less of a result from either one. Huh. So definitely, yeah. Interesting. So I, I would agree that, that, that it should be used in moderation. I don't think someone should use it more than two or three times a week, especially yeah. if it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, so what, so as far as uh, fertility goes and, and, um, and, and menstruation, have you, are you taking any kind of NAD precursor, NAD supplements? Um, gosh, what supplements am I taking? Um, I don't know if I'm taking anything specific for NAD. I might be. Um, I'm currently taking a, um, like a herbal formula for fertility. It's got mm -hmm. a lot of like chase, chase tree, chase tree berry in it, mm -hmm. uh, which is like Vitex is another name for it, um, which I find is very helpful. Um, I take any cysteine like NAC, which is a precursor to glutathione, which is yeah. really good for the liver, which helps support the hormones um, and lots of B vitamins as well. Um, sometimes I take nootropics, but that's more just for like energy and brain function. Yeah compared to fertility. Um, yeah, that's kind of like what I'm taking right now. And I find those things help. Like I, I definitely find since I started taking these supplements specifically for fertility last May, I think it was, um, I've definitely seen a change in my cycle. So it's been good. It's very interesting. Have you heard about uh, David Sinclair's book, Lifespan? Yes, I have it. Yeah. You have it. So the reason I was asking you, I don't remember if he mentioned there, it there, but he did mention it anecdotally in a few interviews that one of his um, PhDs that work with him fed it to fed it to his mom, uh, NMN, and uh, which is an NAD precursor, um, and she started menstruating again. Hmm. So I should look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> So um, as far as, so I see you're doing a lot of like cold exposure as well, or at least mm -hmm. you have done um, mm -hmm. cold exposure. Is it something you do, you do that you do on a regular basis? Yeah. I mean, it's, we're getting to spring now, so it's a bit warmer outside. Um, but I would try, I try to do it maybe once a week, maybe a couple times a month. Um, definitely more in the summer. Um in terms of like going in the ocean, going in lakes, going in rivers. That's my favorite way to do it. Like, of course you can do a cold shower um, or even like a cold water face dunk where you like fill your sink with cold water and you just plunge your face in. Um, and it feels really good. Like I'll do a cold shower if I'm in like a funk, like mm -hmm. my mood is not good and I'm just like kind of down and I'm, you know, it's Monday or I'm like sick of COVID or whatever. Um, I'll take a cold shower and it'll make me feel better within like 30 seconds. Like it really, really boosts your mood and like wakes you up, which is really nice. Um, but my favorite way to do it is for sure. Like in nature, um, mm -hmm. outside, like hundred percent, like it's so much better than doing it in a cold shower. Definitely. And definitely it's also, it's also, it also is better for you mentally. I feel like it hardens you mentally way more than it would just, you know, switching some, so your, your water from hot, hot to cold and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. It's also just like exhilarating. Like if you're getting into the ocean or getting into a river, like it's, it's just so much more fun. You're also getting like the negative ions from the ocean, from the water around you. You're grounding mm -hmm. yourself. Like you're not just like surrounded by EMF and, electronics right like it's a very yes. um stress-free way to do it and very like calming way to do it and so that's why that's like my favorite way to do it for sure definitely especially especially these days where we're where the world is cooped inside and 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 
you definitely want to <laughs> compound experiences when you go outside. Exactly, exactly. Did, did, did you have a lot of experiences in the last year to, to go outside and, 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 um, and, and kind of have fun? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the west coast of Canada um, mm-hmm. and COVID is, is okay here. It's not as bad as the east coast. Um, so like we can go to the trails, we can go to the parks, um, everything's social distanced, but on the West coast, like we're literally on the ocean with mountains, like there's so much to do outside, thankfully. Um, so I have a lot of access to places, um, Mm -hmm. whereas people who live like on the East coast don't really necessarily, unless they drive up North. So yeah, I've been, I've been doing a lot. And this summer, like I plan on camping a lot lots mm-hmm. of hiking um because it's kind of all we can do but i also love it regardless like i used, i've been hiking and camping and into nature even before this time so it's it's fine for me that is yeah that is envious here in florida we don't have a lot of a lot of hiking trails if you want mm. we can if we want we can see some alligators and, and get a lot of <laughs> yeah i was thinking uh about your area the other day because uh mm-hmm. Upgrade Labs have uh, have just published that they are opening a, yeah. a, a kind of a an all inclusive um, mm-hmm. center in in Victoria, which is which is kind of in your area, right? Yeah. So Victoria is on the island. Um, yeah. So Dave is opening up um, like a biohacking fitness center. So like Upgrade Labs, a bulletproof coffee cafe, and yeah. then a place for him to record his uh, bulletproof podcast it's all going to be in like one building um which is really cool i think it's opening pretty soon i think it's opening in um a couple months yeah. wow mm-hmm. wow that's that's amazing are you, yeah. are you planning on uh, on visiting it yeah yeah i've been talking to the team quite a bit um i'll definitely go and visit and try everything and yeah for sure what is the technology there that you're waiting for or looking forward to to, to trying that you haven't tried until now yeah um i haven't done the hyperbaric chamber mm-hmm. yet. i haven't done that um there's some fitness machines i haven't done um that are seem very difficult yeah. <laughs> i've seen the that video robotic arm i forgot yeah. it wow it's, it's amazing yeah there's this i forget the name of it but there's this one that it's like a squat rack mm-hmm. um and basically it's AI. So it measures your force when you're going down and your force when you're pushing back up and it will change the pressure or the weight according to your, the force that you're pushing through. Like I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it, but it's very, very cool. And it's very like specific to you as a person. So it's not just like, you know, just plain wow. and you're trying to lift and push and pull the same amount. Um, which sounds really cool. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, yeah. And like anything else they offer, like I, I, I think I've tried a lot of biohacking technologies at this point. I'm very lucky mm-hmm. like that. Um, but there's always new stuff coming out. So it's, it's cool. Yeah. Like biohacking is very, very innovative, like yes. very innovative. It's, it's just, funny. Like, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned it because um, one of the questions we had we had submitted for this podcast was yeah. from uh, some someone who, who who watched your post about cycling with an mm-hmm. AI uh, bicycle stationary yeah. bike and wanted to know if there is a real difference if you if you, if you feel different what what is the experience of that as opposed to normal stationary bike yeah yeah so the carol it's called carol um i actually had someone speak about it on my podcast a couple of years ago um basically it's an ai bike so similar kind of concept so you get on this bike and you do a set of like six rides and the bike learns your power and learns your speed and learns what you can your output and then every time after that that you get on it will change the resistance according to your previous workouts according to your body 
And so every time you get on the bike, the workout, it's not like a traditional bike where you'll like crank it up to like 60% or whatever. Mm -hmm. It does it for you. So you get on there and it, it'll be like eight minutes. And with eight minutes, you'll have like two 20 second sprints. And the Mm -hmm. rest of the time, you're just like cycling very slowly. But during those 20 second sprints, it decides how hard you're going to go. So it's, it's really cool because of course it's very personalized. It's very unique to you, Mm -hmm. um, but it's really hard. Like it's really difficult because it's pushing you to your max every single yeah. time you get on there. So, I mean, it's great. Like from a, from a workout standpoint, um, and that's what they market it as, right? Is like, instead of doing a 45 minute bike ride, get the same results in eight minutes, right? I think, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually, so, so that, it's, that actually leads us to another question. So, um, first of all, I think I, in general, the, um, High intensity interval training is is definitely one of my favorite biohacks uh, because the ability to get a good exercise without spending a few hours in the gym is is life changing for me. Even though I still spend it, I just do different things. Um, is definitely life changing. And we had a question uh, whether or not uh, there are exercises that are more conducive to longevity and to, uh, and to skin, skin health in general, but longevity as well. So mm-hmm. uh, obviously high intensity interval training is, is what comes to my mind, but do you have any other ideas or, or do you want to expand on that? Yeah, I think, yeah, like you said, high intensity is definitely good for longevity, um, really good for your metabolism, really good just to shock the system um compared to just doing chronic cardio i think Mm -hmm. chronic cardio is very difficult on the body so like marathon runners people who yeah spend an hour on a treadmill um that is yeah stressful but it's 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 difficult because like in terms of skin health i mean any i think any type of exercise is probably good for your skin um sweating getting out toxins pushing the body i think is good but i think you know maybe there's some things that are a little bit better like maybe yoga is a bit better than doing an hour of chronic cardio because yoga you know isn't necessarily as like high impact on your skin and it's very good for stress relief as well and like uh really good for breathing and that type of thing so that could be helpful. Um, but I think honestly, like as long as, as long as it's not chronic cardio and as long as you're not overdoing it in terms of like spending an hour every single day, lifting really heavy weights and no rest days, like Mm -hmm. as long as you're not overdoing it, I think all exercise is good. Um, but people definitely overdo it, especially women, women overdo fitness all the time and they lose their periods and they have fertility issues and, um, it, it's hard. It's, it's hard, but there has to be this like level of taking a step back and resting and letting the body rejuvenate and build muscle while it's resting. So, yeah, yeah. I think you're touching on a, an amazing point where reading a lot of epidemiological studies, uh, on either blue zones or longevity in general, you can, you can really pick up on a lot of small details of um, you know what you can do to improve your your health, your skin health, your 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 longevity, etc. But what always arises to me in the you know concluding these articles is that there is always a give and a take. If you want maximal performance right now, you are paying for it in longevity, and vice versa. You're not gonna you know I love jujitsu. That's I, I love grappling. That's what I do every every moment that i have to spare but i realize that if i want to be the best right now my joints are not going to be there in 10 years and that really you know applies to <laughs> to everything whether we want to look our best right now and 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 do all our surgeries right now in 10 years we're going to look <laughs> you know yeah. fill in the blank yeah <laughs> 
So that is really what arises to me. And, and, and um, you know, kind of segueing to that, what is your take on skin health? What do you do aside from light therapy, which we kind of spoke about a little bit, what uh, measures do you take to, 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 for skin longevity or for your skin health? Yeah, so um, it, it changes. It depends, it depends on what I need to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. It depends, yeah, depends on what I'm dealing with really. But yeah. definitely diet is, is really important. Nutrition, um, a low inflammation diet is the best. So low sugar, low processed foods, low alcohol, yeah. um, anything that's dehydrating like alcohol is not going to help your skin. So just focusing on that sort of thing. Um, also dairy, like a lot of people react to dairy in their skin and it can be very inflammatory for them. It can cause mm -hmm. acne, rosacea, redness, um, dryness, like all sorts of things like that. So that's kind of, so for me, like nutrition is really important for skin um, and hydration. Like I probably drink about two liters of water a day, maybe okay. sometimes wow. more. Nice. Um, that is really, really important. And you can see it. Like you can see when someone is dehydrated and they don't drink enough water or they drink too much coffee and too much alcohol. Like you can see it in their skin, right? Like it's not very plump and it's, it's almost like maybe like hollow, like kind of like yeah. just tired, like just tired is like yeah. the way to describe it. Um, yeah. So I find like working on my skin from the inside out is actually the most beneficial thing. Um, and then on top of that, like, you know, using the right products, facials, um, being aware of the sun, obviously, like we need the sun for our hormones and some sunshine is great, but not overdoing it. Um, yeah, so that's do, different things. Do you, uh, do you wear SPF? Do you wear sunblock? Um, I don't in the winter here. I mean, a lot of people are like wear SPF every single day, but I live in Canada and the amount of sunshine that we get in the winter is just like nothing. It's so minimal. Um, but in the summer, for sure, in the summer, sunblock. Um, but I still like, I go back and forth with this every single summer because we need some sunshine. We need vitamin D. We need the benefits of sunshine. So if we like lather ourselves up and fully block that, then it's kind of like, what are we, what are we doing? Um, so there has to be a balance with it. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in the biohacking world who don't wear any SPF and, and they just debunk the idea of blocking sunshine in total. So, but then there's all the people in the skincare world who say, no, like the sun is going to age you so much faster. Um, so wear SPF every single day. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm in between. So so yeah, you, you've just described our our classic uh, classic. We are torn between the two worlds, right? Yeah. We we're trying to develop now a product that has some kind of um, a, a zinc oxide, which is which is a sunblock that that is more less toxic, but also something that you know, astaxanthin, which is which is an antioxidant, is amazing for uh, to help your body kind of repel some of the damage of the sun. So we are, we are trying to deal with it, but it is a touchy subject, especially in the biohacking world. Like if yeah. you're going to listen to someone like Dr. Jack Cruz, you're probably not going to ever put any sunblock on you, but uh, mm -hmm. any, you know, it's difficult when you open social media, any kind of beauty guru, all they want to talk about all day is the amount of sun SPF that they use, which yeah. is, yeah. So we're there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, did you try, did you try retinol? Did you try anything like that? Yeah. So time and time again, when I try retinol or vitamin C on my skin, my skin does not like it. Uh -huh. like, and I've tried different products. Um, even eye creams, my skin does not like it. I have to be so careful. Um, the only thing that I have found that works in terms of retinol, like vitamin A is uh bakuchi oil i don't know if i'm yeah. saying that right but it's basically like i'm sure you know it's like the natural yeah. version of uh retinol mm -hmm. and that's the only thing that i don't react to because yeah. i find with retinol it's too harsh on my skin and my skin will get red and almost like peel um so i just have to be really careful and same with the vitamin c like it's too strong like 
I've used different vitamin C and it's the same thing. So um, I, I, yeah, and try and be careful with it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's definitely, first of all, probably retinol, retinol is probably something that you really need to build resilience for and, and vitamin mm -hmm. C as well. It's, they're irritants. So probably yeah. starting on something very low would be better because really what happens now in the industry, everyone's trying to one up one another. So you're going to see like 35% vitamin C, but in yeah. truth, most people would, would, would react to 10. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's definitely a, a touchy subject. What we were trying to do with, um, with our care line, which is a line that, that, mm -hmm. that deals with NAD, uh, NAD precursors activating sirtuins, which are anti-aging or, or longevity genes, was to help skin in general, which does react because of different reasons, but which does react to these retinoids to help it deal with it better or to recoup better. So instead of like a full 48 hours where which you're red, you're going to be red for an hour or two, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is really what we're trying to do because NAD on its own, and, and this is coming out also from our research, on its own, if I just apply it to your skin, even if I get it to your cells, it's, it's great, but it's not like your cells realize that they need to remove that line off of your face right now. Yeah. It's, they, they need some kind of homework. So what we're really looking at is how does it, how does it affect you after you use vitamin C retinols? How does it affect you after you do like micro needling or any kind of facial, mm -hmm. any kind of homework that you give the body to, to repair itself? And then there we go. Well, let's give it the building blocks that it needs. Right. right. Another thing that you can try, it's a kind of a, a, um, a uh, you know, publicity for, for another company, but uh, we believe in a holistic approach also in, in products. <laughs> Have you heard about uh, one skin one skin no I don't think so they're they're super new and I can't say that their research is is a hundred percent substantiated but it's very interesting um so are you familiar with rapamycin uh Peter Atia talks about it a lot yeah I've heard of it so um what they tried to do is uh to make a product that mimics the good effects of rapamycin without mm -hmm. any of the negative in a skincare formula. And that does, uh, that can replace retinoids. It's very interesting. It's a peptide it's called One Skin OS1 and they okay. look like a great company. So I would look, I, I would look into it uh, if you want to replace retinol. Okay, for sure. I will. Uh, Brittany, kind of to, 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 to sum, it, sum it all up, I, I, I would love, um, I always, try to imagine someone listening to us for the first time, mm. getting convinced that they should biohack their way, their way to uh, <laughs> beauty and, and, and health. And yeah. they really want to know where to start. Mm. So what would be an approach for someone that just heard about it? What should they do next? Yeah, so I think the best thing before like buying anything or before yeah. going down the rabbit hole, um, is really becoming more self-aware. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't necessarily know the symptoms and signs that they're dealing with. And every time I talk to clients and ask them about their digestion or their bowel movements or their skin or their sleep, like a lot of the times they don't know. They just yeah. say, oh, it's fine. But then when you start tracking it, maybe you track it in your phone, you track it on a piece of paper or whatever, people actually realize that it's kind of off. So yeah. I think before even like trying any type of biohacking strategies, I think you need to increase your self-awareness um, mm -hmm. and look at your skin, look at your stress, look at your sleep, look at, look at your life in total in a very holistic manner, look at your nutrition and see, you know, track it for a week and see how things are. How are you feeling? Do you feel bloated? Do you feel tired every day at two o'clock? Okay, like why do you feel tired? Right. So I think increasing awareness is the first step. And then after that, you can kind of pinpoint and see, okay, what is going on? Why is this happening? What can I do to level this up? What can I, what can I do to optimize this and help this area become healthier? Um, and the way you go about doing that is research. You can hire somebody, have a professional help you. Um, there's all sorts of things, right? So 
but I that, think like self, yeah, self awareness is number one. And and do you supply uh, services on over you know online? Yeah, so I work with clients around the world. Um, my business is fully online, so mm -hmm. I. Yeah, I do consultations. Um, I also work with other health businesses as well. But for clients, it's a lot of um, biohacking, but nutrition as well, meal plans, looking at your lifestyle, looking at everything that we've talked about, um, yeah. and really just helping people become healthier. Because I think that's, I think that's the most important thing, especially with how things are lately. Like just leveling people's health up in a very tangible and actionable way um, that's not complicated and actually easy to do and easy to understand. That's, that, that makes a lot of sense because I think people need before, before even knowing what their problem is, they need to know the language to speak of their problem, right? They need yeah. to know to recognize if something's wrong or not. And I think when you, when you have a, 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 a guide in that world, in that world, definitely where everything kind of renews all the time and, and, and yes. you have yeah, something new coming out every day. It's really important to have a guide long-term, long-term yeah. after, after you know yourself. Exactly. What, is, what is the best way to uh, get a hold of you, to follow you, to, to, to mm -hmm. stay up to date? Yeah, so my website is biohackingbrittany.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, biohackingbrittany. I'm basically that in all social media platforms. Um, you can also just email me, which is info at biohackingbrittany.com. If you want to talk in terms of like working together or you have a health question, um, yeah, I'm available for sure. And I also have a podcast called biohacking with Brittany, um, that's available everywhere as well. Okay. That's fantastic. Brittany, I, I appreciate the time so much. And it was, I feel like we've only, you know, scratched the surface, but yeah. <laughs> You can never end, you know, you can just talk yeah. about one research for an hour or so. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much, Brittany. I hope we can do it again at some point. And I wish you a an amazing uh, week that's coming ahead. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on.